Let's begin this video with an exercise. I have here a sheet of paper. I want you to add up all the numbers that I've written on the sheet of paper and tell me what the sum is. So here you go. What's the sum of all the numbers I've written on this sheet of paper? Well, there are no numbers here. So your instincts might say the sum is zero. And you would be correct. The sum of no numbers is zero. But we should probably try to find a way to justify this other than our intuition. Here's a simple way to justify it. Let's say we have a natural number n. And then we have n plus n. n plus n, we can represent that as 2n. And if we had n plus n plus n, that's of course 3n. So what if we added n up zero times? Well, it stands to reason and that would be zero n, the empty sum, zero n, which is zero. Okay, that's simple enough. But what if we wanted to find the product of all the numbers on my sheet of paper? Well, there are no numbers, so you might think, well, it must be zero again. And this is where our intuition does not agree with the math. Because if we use the same sort of reasoning we just used with addition, what happens? Well, we have n, then we can look at n times n. This is n squared. And this is n to the first power, of course. And then n times n times n. It's n cubed. But what is n to the zeroth power? That's the empty product, and it is 1. Now, it may seem strange to you that the product of no numbers is 1, but I'm going to show you that this is actually a very natural thing. So let's look at another example. Let's take u to be a non-empty set, and let's look at all of the subsets of u, the power set of u. Now, there's two operations that are natural to put on this set of objects, the union of sets and the intersection of sets. Let's look at union first. So this notation is just signifying that we're looking at the power set of u or the subsets of u under the operation of union. What would it mean to take the union of no sets, the empty union? Well, we can denote that like this. The union of all sets a sub alpha such that alpha is in the empty set. It's a union over an empty family of sets. So what is this union? Well, what does it mean to be in this union? To be in the union of all these sets a sub alpha, it means that you have to be in at least one of the a sub alphas. Or in other words, x is in the union if and only if there exists an alpha in the empty set such that x is in a sub alpha. Clearly this is false because alpha is not in the empty set, it's the empty set. So we can conclude that this union over an empty family of sets is the empty set. So the union of no sets is the empty set. This is again pretty intuitive. But what if we looked at the intersection? What would the empty intersection be? Well now we have this. the intersection of the sets a sub alpha such that alpha is in the empty set. So what is the intersection of this empty list of sets? Well, instead of asking what would it mean for an element to be in here, what would it mean for an element to not be in here? You can kind of think about De Morgan's laws here. X is not in this intersection. That would mean that there must be some subset a sub alpha that x is not in. And we have a contradiction here because there exists an alpha in the empty set. That's definitely false. So it must be false that x is not in this empty intersection. So that means that the empty intersection, the intersection of no sets, is our universal set u. It's this, the overall set that we're working with. So that's a little strange, right? The intersection of no sets at all is the overall set universe that we're working in. So go ahead and think about the four examples that we looked at. So we found the empty sum to be zero. We found the empty product to be one. 
we found the empty union to be the empty set, and we found the empty intersection to be U, the overall parent set that we're looking at in that particular instance. So what is the overall trend going on here? I'll let you think about that for a few moments. The overall trend that we have is that each of these results is the identity of the respective operation. N plus zero is N. N times one is N. If you take a set X and you union it with the empty set, you just have the set again. And if you take a set X and it's a subset of U and you intersect it with U, you get X again. It's the identity of the operation that we're considering at the time. So why is this happening? Why are the empty operations giving us the identity each time? Well, this is actually due to the associative property of the operation. The overall flavor of associativity is that if we have the sum of two sums, we want that to be the same thing as just one big sum. So let's say we added the empty sum to a sum. Here's the empty sum, the sum of no numbers, the sum of n sub i such that i is in the empty set. That's the empty sum. Here's the sum of some numbers n sub i where i is an x, some indexing set. This is the sum of two sums, so I want that to be the same as one big sum. So I should union the two indexing sets. But the empty set union with x is just x again. So in the end, we have that when we add the empty sum to some other sum, it must be the same thing as that other sum. That makes the empty sum zero. And even though addition is the specific example I used here, the argument's the same no matter what the operation is. For example, if we did the product, This is the empty product, the product of all numbers n sub i, such that i is in the empty set, that's nothing. This is the empty product times this other product, n sub i, where i is in this indexing set x. Now, just like before, we want this product of products to just be one big product. So here's the product of n sub i, where i is in the empty set union x. But the empty set union with x is simply x. So just like before, it turns out that multiplying the empty product with this product doesn't change this product, which requires that the empty product be equal to one. So I realize you may not find yourself in the situation where you need to add up an empty list of numbers or take the product of nothing very often, but having this idea in the back of your mind does kind of allow you to make some neat connections and to kind of simplify certain definitions. So a good example that I want you to think about is the span of a set of vectors in a vector space. There are two common ways to define the span. The first way is that it's the set of all linear combinations of the vectors in the set that we're taking the span of. And the second is that it's the intersection of all of the subspaces of the vector space that contains the vectors in that set. So in the second case, the span of the empty set, it's pretty easy to see that that's going to be the zero subspace. But if you look at the first definition, armed with the idea of the empty sum, you can see that in that case too, the empty sum is zero. And so the zero subspace is the span of the empty set. So I've noticed little connections happen like that pretty frequently. But anyways, that's going to have to wrap this video up. I'll see you next time. Sorry, 93, I even got it tatted on me. 2012, lady, I don't feel sorry. Hey, you know me. Without T, it probably would be 